Witness the beginning of the end for death, but how steep a price will the Earth pay for immortality? And can the newly reformed Unity balance the scales? Let's find out in our review of Resurgence number 1 from Valiant Entertainment. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Resurgence number 1. Since Alien Books partnered with Valiant to bring their universe back to LCS shelves, their marketing materials have heavily pushed Resurgence as the mother of all crossovers to repay long-waiting Valiant fans for their patience. Resurgence number 1 is finally here, and for the most part, a small army of creators deliver on that promise, with the first issue that looks great, is largely well-written, except for one part we'll get to a little bit later, and builds up a world-shaking threat that justifies bringing Unity back together. Resurgence number 1 isn't a perfect comic, but it's certainly one of the better issues out of the new Alien Valiant partnership. Alright, so let's dig in. Resurgence number 1 begins with Dr. Augustus Silk chatting with Eidolon about his desire to elevate humanity to immortality. His plans for achieving that end are within reach. Eidolon, a Syat who manipulates DNA, agrees with Silk's lofty goals, but she's smart enough to pick up on Silk's personal ambitions. The first scene, which is a, basically a prologue, is informative, although it's quiet and pretty sedate. Still, it's necessary because it informs readers about Silk's personality and establishes his motives. Like a typical politician, Silk says all the right words to appease his listeners, but there's an undercurrent in his tone and in word choices that sounds self-serving and phony and kind of slimy. In short, Silk doesn't pass the authenticity sniff test, which is exactly the point. <laughs> He's the main villain. Elsewhere, we catch up with Gilad and Tama walking through the woods to find the next portal that's about to open, connecting the Earth with the faraway. They find the portal, but before Tama can close it with her geomancer powers, a jaw-snapping dinosaur lunges through and swallows Gilad whole. The dinosaur turns its sights on Tama. Suddenly, the dinosaur is ripped through the middle by the blade-wielding savage, who frees Gilad and tells Tama and Gilad to keep closing portals to stop invaders from entering his land, which is the faraway. Just as a heads up in this issue, the creators ensure every valued hero and villain gets a moment to shine in this issue, even if it is brief. The preceding scene is important because it showcases the difficulty Tama has with closing portals, the dangerous critters that could come through from the far away to pester average humans, and Savage's struggle to keep out invaders on his side of the portals. In and of itself, the sequence drops multiple nuggets of information wrapped in an exciting dinosaur fight. The comic then switches to a scene in Topeka, Kansas with a different artist. A boy named Chris is goaded by his friends to make a dangerous leap into a ravine on his bike, inviting certain death. With the promise of notoriety for recording his death jump while streaming online, Chris goes for it. He leaps into the ravine, he smashes his head on the rocks, and he dies. And then he's alive again. Death is indeed ending. Chris's exploits both during the death scene and afterwards when he meets with his friends and family to kind of grapple with what's happened interweave throughout the issue and underscore how the absence of death is affecting everyday life for everyday people in a myriad of ways. Some people consider it a blessing, others consider it a curse, almost to biblical proportions, and it helps to see how the average person's first brush with immortality isn't necessarily a happy one. Plus, Chris's portion of the comic switches to a different artist, so you get a strong contrast from a different point of view. The comic then switches over to Silk's growing commune. Kay, the geomancer before Tama, witnesses a ritual that brings Flamingo back to life. Flamingo is confused and uncertain about how and why she was brought back to life, and she's especially unconvinced about Silk and all of humanity becoming, in effect, gods. If you're reading the written version of this review, this comic, for us in any way, was rated mature. And if you're wondering why it's rated mature, it's because of this scene. Flamingo comes back to life, and she's exposed uh, by full frontal nudity. So, it's, you know, yeah, you get a big eyeful there. Also, the scene establishes the potential for dissent within Silk's inner ranks if Flamingo doesn't fully buy into what Silk is selling. The scene concludes with Shadow Man and Dark both considering the cost of Flamingo's resurrection from their respective shadowy corners. So again, even in brief glimpses, every hero is getting a turn to show up. What follows is a brief collection of scenes wherein Armstrong and Ivar, his brother, chat about the contrast of living in the now versus working for the future. Livewire stealthily infiltrates a silk rally to find the location of the leader's commune. 
Tama getting snatched through a portal at the coincidental moment, Kay reaches out to Galad for his support once again because she was the former Geomancer, Faith rescuing construction workers from a faraway lava flow, and Ninjak getting frustrated because his lethal moves are no longer lethal. When we say every hero gets a moment, we mean it. This issue flows reasonably well, but some readers may find it a little overstuffed, or maybe even a lot overstuffed. Chris's additional scenes may be part of a grander plan, that's the kid who died on his bike, but perennial favorite characters like Ninjak lose page space in the exchange. Further, the story takes a nosedive, and this is what we hinted at in the first impressions section previously, as soon as Faith gets a turn. Her narration and dialogue are painfully annoying and almost on terrible. There's nothing wrong with being an overweight superhero to make a point about representation, which I think is the, her whole shtick in the first place, but would it help if her poor health wasn't accompanied by a poor personality? I mean, just everything about her is off-putting. The issue ends with Ivar, who's also known as Time Walker, gathering the Unity aboard his space station to strategize, starting with a special mission for Exo Man of War. Overall, Resurgence number one lives up to its expectations by bringing almost every hero from Valiant's catalog together to face a threat against the natural order of life and death. Every hero gets a moment to shine, which is fine. The challenge seems monumental in a sort of esoteric way, because how do you fight not dying? We'll find that out, I, I suppose. And the path forward is unpredictable. As crossovers go, Resurgence number one is a decent start. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. We're used to seeing Guillermo Fajardo's name as one of the top tier Xenoscope artists, so you'd be right to expect a comic with lots of detail, strong figure work, and mature action. Fajardo delivers in spades, so you know you're getting a great looking comic. Plus, Julio Azamor picks up the interconnected scenes with Chris to give readers the everyday person's perspective. Admittedly, Fajardo and Azamor's styles don't really complement each other too well, and it's not quite clear why the styles needed to change that drastically but Asmore does a great job with what he's given. The big question new readers will likely want to know is how much or little do you need to know to hop into this event? The short answer is kind of a lot. The status of each character and their relationships with one another rely heavily on the knowledge of events from recent Valiant titles. For example, you would need to know that Armstrong is no longer technically immortal, that Exo Manamore was recently fighting a war in space, and that Flamingo was dead for the developments in this issue to make sense. Of course, there are plenty of back issues available to catch up, but there is enough required backstory to say this issue is not a good jumping on point. Final thoughts when we think about Resurgence number one, who was promised to be the mother of all crossovers for Valiant. On the whole, yes, the publisher delivered. The creative teams do their best to give every hero a moment to shine as they face an earth-shaking threat, and the art looks great. That said, the issue feels overstuffed at times, and some of the conversations and scenes don't make sense if you don't already know the current status of every character. So, not a great jumping on point, and a little too busy, but it, overall it gets the job done. Therefore, Resurgence number 1 earns an 8 out of 10. A big crossover should look and feel big, so you're getting what's promised. But what do you think? Are you a Valiant fan, and are you looking forward to this crossover? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below with your predictions for how the crossover will turn out. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out all the preview images, and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So, thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.